So one of the common tasks that editors have to do a lot is blur out faces for facial recognition. So let's show you how to do that and talk about why. So to blur her face, I need to go into the Sapphire Blur and Sharpen Kit and select S Blur. I then click into my effects panel and click Track in Mocha, and this will launch the Mocha interface. This reads directly off of the timeline of whatever my host application is. Now in order to track in Mocha, I need to find where the object is most parallel to the camera, largest in frame, and least blurry. You're never going to have a perfect marriage of all of that, so I'm going to pick this frame here. Let's just really quick talk about what Mocha tracks. So Mocha looks for a pattern of pixels, not point and features. What does that mean? Well, that means that this is a really good choice to track, this is a really good choice to track, the side of his head is a really good choice to track, the side of his arm is fine, her face is fine, these walls are fine. What's not easy to track is this big blank area here, or this big blank area here. Now I can still track this wall if I draw a spline that includes more texture than just this one section, but if I were only tracking this section, I would not have enough texture to track. That being said, the side of this guy's face is enough texture to track. So if I draw an X-spline around the side of his face and hit track backwards, I'll get really nice results. And our track will hang on really well. Now what is a plane? Well, a plane is just a pattern of pixels moving relative to one another, if you ask our programmers, and that's kind of programmer speak. Think of us as a texture tracker, okay? So this texture is moving in one direction. This texture is moving the same. This texture is moving in another direction. But this texture and this texture are moving separately. So if I were going to track them, I would track the top part of the arm and the side part of the arm if I needed a really good track. For Roto, you always want to break people up paper doll style. For really fine tracks, you always want to track one plane at a time, all right? And you want to align your surface tool and make sure that your track is tracking properly. But for people, you don't have to be as conscious about that sort of thing. To track her face, let's draw a spline right around her face with our X splines. Again, Bezier's are right here if you want to use them, but I prefer X splines because they're a little bit faster and I can relax for curves and pull tight for corners. We're going to turn our thumbnails off because I don't want to have them distracting me. And I'm going to hit track backwards. Now Mocha will follow her head. It followed it off screen pretty well, but if I wanted it to continue to follow off screen, I could always just move this shape to another location that's moving along with the camera and keep tracking backwards. If I then delete that keyframe, my shape will completely go off screen without me having to animate it that way. Now, what about this hand here? This is going to get in the way as soon as we start tracking forward. You see, it gets caught on the hand. Well, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to hold the hand out. So I'm going to take my X-spline and I'm going to draw a quick shape, just a garbage mat, right around our foreground guy's torso. I'm going to call this guy torso holdout, and I'm going to call this face track. Now I'm going to take face track and I'm actually going to make this shape just a little bit larger so that I cover more of her body, and we're going to hit track forward. Now we're going to start to lose this track, so I'm going to move this over, and now I'm going to jump ahead where I can see her again. I'm going to draw my shape around her, and I'm going to continue to track forward. Now I see that I actually need to move my shape for my holdout guy a little bit, so I'm going to keep tracking forward, and now we don't want to get caught on this guy, so I'm going to draw a garbage shape around him, and pull her shape a little bit further out, and we're going to keep tracking forward. So I lost my track there again, no problem, we're just going to jump ahead, move our shape over, I'm going to delete my holdout shape, and keep tracking her forward, just like that. I want to track her face, but I've made all these animated keyframes making the shape larger. I can simply delete them by jumping to the keyframe and deleting them, and I can animate the shape to her face. As long as I adjust my shape, it will move along with my track, and I have to make a lot less keyframes. Once I'm happy with my shape, I can go ahead and delete the guy torso, because I don't need it. And actually, I feel like my face track shape is a little too small, so I'm going to turn my Uber key on, 
If I turn my Uber key on, I can make this shape larger, and now my Uber key will be larger throughout the shot. So if we save and close this now, and now this applies my Mocha Face Roto to my blur effect. But now we have a compositing problem back in our host. You can see the blur goes over this guy's hand as well as the lady's face because we have defined an area to blur but not an area to keep sharp. And in my Mocha drop down menu inside of the effects panel, I can apply a feather to the mask by using the blur Mocha slider. So how do I cut that out? I duplicate my layer and create a new track and I move my layer to the track above my original layer. And now I'm going to use a different sapphire tool. I'm going to use the sapphire composite filter S layer and apply that to my upper track. Inside of my effects panel I will choose edit in mocha and launch mocha. And I'm going to rotoscope my guy where he moves over my lady's face here. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to draw an X spline around his arm and hand because they're moving together. If they were if they were moving separately, I'd actually need to split his hand off into a different shape. And I'm going to track his torso. This is going to be pretty quick and dirty. We're going to call this guy body, guy arm. And we're going to track this forward. And we're going to stop. And we're going to track backwards. There we go. Now we're going to take both these layers and I'm going to trim my layer properties just to have a nice clean shape. Same here, I'm going to trim right inside of layer properties. So now my shapes will disappear when I don't need them anymore. I'm going to correct my shape, but I'm only going to worry about the shape edge where it's moving over the lady's face. Same thing for the arm. I'm going to correct the hand where it moves over her face, otherwise I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, so that will give us our hand over her face. I'm going to turn my gears off, I'm going to pan over to this guy, and we're going to do the same thing for where he crosses in front of her too. I'm going to draw my X-spline around him, but only where he's crossing her face, and I'm going to hit track forward, just like that. We're going to trim our layer, and correct our shape where we need to. Really quickly, so let's just save this, and close it, and now you can see that our foreground people are composited above the blur that I put on this lady's face. I need to feather the edges a bit, so I use Blur Mocha in the Mocha drop-down menu inside of my effects panel. Now you might notice a white edge around my mat. That's because I need to go into my alpha and I need to change my comp pre molt settings and turn the checkbox off. Now when I hit play, you can see that our lady's identity is protected but we also don't lose our foreground elements. If you have any questions, I am Mary Poplin, and you can find out more on www.borisfx.com.